Okay, um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Uh, let me begin by extending my gratitude to the conference organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I am Onola Borai. Uh, I'm currently a postdoc in Mikhail Kastner's group uh, at the National Institute for Theoretical Physics in Stellenbosch, which is affiliated to Stellenbosch University in South Africa. The title of my talk, I've modified it a little bit from the, uh, from the title that was announced, is Many Body Quantum Kinetics in the Phase Space, uh, Simulating Spin Dynamics by the BBGKY Trajectories of Sampled Phase Points. Now, before I begin, let me espouse a little bit on this acronym. BBGKY is an acronym of uh, five physicists, uh, Nikolai Bogolyubov, Max Born, uh, Herbert Green, John Kirkwood, and Jacques Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne is underlined because chronologically he was first here. The BBGKY uh, trajectory or the BBGKY hierarchy in many body physics refers to a set of equations describing the dynamics of interacting particles with respect to S less than N particle distributions. If you have N interacting uh, particles, uh, the BBGKY hierarchy gives you a set of coupled ordinary differential equations involving all possible S particle distributions where S is less than or equal to N. The equation for the S particle correlations in this hierarchy includes the S plus one particle correlations, thus forming coupled chains of equations of increasing order. So this, yeah, so this is basically all of us, whoops. For some reason, the pictures have all vanished. I apologize for that. Uh, our group at Stellenbosch is uh, myself, another former postdoc, Dr. Lorenzo Pucci, and of course, Mikhail himself and where we have an experimental collaboration for, our, for benchmarking and for uh, validating our method with the Instituto de Física de Sao Carlos in Brazil with uh, Professor Roman Bachelard, who's here as well, as well as one of his graduate students, uh, Tiago. And we extend acknowledgments to uh, Robin Kaiser, who was here up, up until today from Nice, uh, as well as on the truncated Wigner approximation method that was largely developed and formulated by uh, Dr. Johann Schackenmeier, from Ana Maria Reis Theory Group at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And uh, some experimental data that we're benchmarking against came from uh, John Bollinger's group at NIST. So let me introduce uh, the, what, we're, what I'm going to do in this talk is to present a novel method for simulating quantum many body spin dynamics. This method involves the truncated Wigner approximation applied discreetly in the spin phase space and extended in accuracy with the quantum kinetics of two-point correlations. Now, in principle, this method is completely general. In practice, it's applicable to a large variety of both integrable and non-integrable many-body systems, especially to long-range interactions, as well as to systems in a high larger than one dimension, especially in systems where matrix product states or DMRG methods begin to fail. And with the computational resources at our disposal, we can uh, apply it to systems of 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 3 particles. Our motivation for uh, developing this method is to study quantum spin systems with long-range interactions out of equilibrium, uh, with a special focus on closed quantum systems that model ongoing experiments involving long-range interactions. There, is, there has been quite a bit of talk at this conference about Rydberg atoms, so I won't go into those, and uh, analogously polar molecules, the experiment that we're focusing on for our data for benchmarking our method comes from uh, an experiment involving ultra-cold ions in a penning trap in 2D from the group of John Bollinger, uh, and they've published their details here in this Nature paper. There's a poster out back that also cites this, uh, this experiment as a basis for their work. Um, it's uh, basically ultra-cold ions in a penning trap uh, that's in a Wigner crystal that's triangular, and by inducing, using a traveling wave to induce transverse excitations, they can effectively model Ising-like interactions with, in the long range where the power law decay between the site to site is tunable from zero, essentially mean field, all to all interactions, all the way to dipoles, three. Uh, in addition to closed quantum systems, uh, we are also interested in looking at open quantum systems that model experimental decoherence. So for instance, in this spinning trap experiment, uh, it essentially only remains closed up to a certain point in time after which interaction with the external environment starts to induce quantum decoherence. So where we want to generalize, I'm currently mostly going to present it for closed quantum systems, but we want to general, we are trying to generalize it to open quantum systems to model the decoherence. And we're also interested in looking at periodically driven systems 
including open quantum systems that are being periodically driven, such as, such as light scattering dipoles with detuning, and I'll go into that at the end a little bit. So let me first explain what I mean by the discrete truncated Wigner approximation and do so by providing a brief review of what Wigner functions are. Now, Eugene Wigner, all the way back in the 1930s, had shown that in quantum mechanics, the state of any system can be completely represented by a quasi-probability Wigner distribution function in a phase space. So here I've shown it notionally for, bosons, for a boson in a continuum, uh, but more generally, if you have any Hermitian operator, like omega hat here, uh, you can uniquely define what's called a Weyl transform, which is basically just the trace of the operator with respect to a phase point operator here, which is defined on a phase space spanned by position and momentum eigenvalues, which are for bosons in a continuum are continuous. Uh, and the phase point operator here is basically the operator that generates a coherent state, a Glauber, Sudarshan Glauber coherent state at a point, well, this should be Q actually, but QP. So for every point in the phase space, there's a coherent state. This generates the coherent state. And tracing the, any Hermitian operator with respect to that phase point at that point gives you the value of a, of a distribution at that point. This distribution is known as the Weyl distribution. And a special case, the Weyl distribution for the density matrix is just the Wigner function. So if you invert this result using trace properties of the phase point operators, you can get the density matrix written as an integral of the Wigner function with respect to the phase point operators. Now, uh, the reason why, I mean, one of the, and there's, of course, here there's a more modern review article by Anatoly Polkovnikov from the Annals of Physics that uh, gives a much more detailed overview of uh, Wigner functions. Uh, here are some properties of the Wigner function that we'll be needing. Uh, the Wigner function is bounded. It's quasi-probability, which is not necessarily uh, non-negative, it can get negative, but it's always bounded. The way I've uh, defined it here, it's bounded between minus two and two, although it's always real. It's normal, integrated over the entire phase space, it's unity. It has traciality properties. If you take two Wigner functions and you integrate them, you'll get the trace of the corresponding density matrices. And most importantly, it's a projection property, which means that if you integrate this along between any two, between a strip that is delimited between any two lines, let's say AQ plus BP is C1 and AQ plus BP is C2, then what you get is the probability that the observable AQ hat plus BP hat has a measurement between C1 and C2. Now, by utilizing this property and inverting it using the trace properties of the phase point operators, we can map these properties, whoops, sorry, yeah, to analogous properties of the phase point operators themselves. So the phase point operator is normal, so it traces unity. It has traciality properties. Two phase point operators trace to delta functions. And integrating a phase point operator on that strip gives you a projection operator, uh, gives you an operator that projects this to this interval. This will be useful because when we're going to discretize this for discrete spins, we're going to get expressions for the uh, phase point operators by utilizing these properties that, are, that have been established for the continuous case. Now, the reason why uh, I uh, gave you an overview of the Wigner function is that if we look at quantum dynamics in the Wigner representation, here I have the von Neumann dynamics of density operator here for a closed quantum system, uh, Hamiltonian system. If I take Weyl transforms on both the sides, on the left-hand side, I have the time derivative of the Wigner distribution. On the right-hand side, I have the Weyl transform of this commutator, which, when you work it out, gives you the Moyle bracket between the Weyl transforms of the constituent operators in the commutator. So if rho here, this becomes W, the Wigner function, and the Weyl symbol of a normal ordered Hamiltonian actually just becomes a classical Hamiltonian. So this is a Moyle bracket. The Moyle bracket is defined as thus so. The sign of this, which means that it's the sine series power, and these arrows means they act on, the, they act on this operator, and the right-facing arrows means they act on this operator. You can clearly see uh, writing it in this form is that if you just look at the lowest order term here, sine theta is theta, get rid of the sign, you can clearly see that this is just the Poisson bracket. So that means that in this expansion, the lowest order contribution is just the classical dynamics. This motivates the truncated Wigner approximation that basically involves a sampling biased by this Wigner distribution of the phase points followed by their classical evolution. So here I've shown it notionally. This is basically just uh, the bosonic Fox state at uh, the zeroth level, it's just a Gaussian. Uh, in the uh, Wigner space, it's also a Gaussian. 
So we try to get some quantum physics from our approximation by sampling phase points with this probability distribution. Uh, here we are assuming that it is a probability distribution. It doesn't go negative, which for this state it doesn't. And so we'll, we're going to sample more points along the maximum here and fewer points away from, this, uh, from the bell curve. And then with each point, we're going to just evolve it classically, so the lowest order in this expansion. And uh, observables in the truncated Wigner approximation is obtained from classically evolving vial symbols. So the expectation value of an observable exactly is given by the trace of the density matrix and uh, the corresponding operator, which is exactly given by the integral of the full Wigner function continued in time according to this dynamics times the vial symbol of the operator also continued in time, which we will approximate uh, by an arithmetic mean of the vial symbol of the, of the sampled points that we've sampled. So this is actually, this is the continuous truncated Wigner approximation. It's been in use for a very long time. There is a reference here that uh, provides more details on it. Uh, a lot of people in chemistry as well as in atomic and molecular physics have used this on single particle problems. We're now going to look at how to discretize it. So now let's just look at a single spin half. And this was essentially uh, shown in this seminal paper by William Wooters all the way back in 1987 and has been generalized to many body systems by uh, Johann Schackenmayer and the folks at the Anna Maria Reis Theory Group, uh, which they published on this PRX last year. So we'll start from just a single spin half. So a single spin half has canonically conjugate degrees of freedom that are linear combinations of the Pauli matrices. They have two discrete eigenvalues each. Let's denote them by up and down. So that as a result, sigma x, sigma y, let's say we have four discrete phase points, which I'm labeling by uh, the letter alpha, and I'm labeling the four discrete phase points now by simply 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, which I can do without loss of generality. Now, of course, uh, if I can define phase point operators that have unit trace, like so here, then I can define a Wigner function of four, consisting of four values, one for each phase point, as a trace of the density matrix for the spin half times the phase point operator. Uh, of course, these R alphas, these Rs are different three vectors, Rs different three Rs for each alpha, and the R alphas are not unique, but they're all formally equivalent, and I choose R alphas, as a sampling scheme to satisfy the projection operator condition that I had shown in the previous slide for the continuous case. So I apply them, I get equations, and then I get non-unique solutions for R, and I can choose one and use them. So this can be easily generalized to many body systems. So now I have a whole bunch of spins. They may be interacting. We have four discrete, uh, we have, uh, four discrete face points for each spin. So for n spins, we have a total of four to the n. Uh, we can, uh, assuming, let's say, that we're starting from uh, a disentangled state that's a product state, then the Wigner function for the full system is just given by the product of the constituent Wigner functions. And irrespective of the initial condition at t is equal to zero, the phase point operator is given by a direct product of the constituent phase point operator. So if I, let's say, sample a few points from here, here denoted by red, for each point I have an alpha. So if I sample from all of them, I have an array of alphas, n array of alphas. I have four to the n such combinations. So I sample a small number of those. And then for each such sample phase points, I, in the truncated, discrete truncated Wigner approximation, I do a classical evolution. And then uh, this classical evolution approximates this exact evolution here, which is shown in the Heisenberg representation. Uh, the, the Heisenberg representation, of course, the Wigner function stays the same. And the phase point operators, which were originally decoupled here, now evolve in time and may couple to a full many-body operators because of the Hamiltonian. And we get observables, just like in the continuous truncated Wigner case, as an arithmetic mean of the vial symbols. And uh, here, notionally, I've demonstrated shown here, this is basically the classic, uh, this is a Poisson bracket, this is basically the classical evolution uh, for uh, general spin Hamiltonian. So, of course, we can clearly see that this method has certain quantitative shortcomings, which is that suppose I have an initial state that's, that may be correlated or may not be correlated, the quantum physics from, from those correlations will manifest themselves here because the correlations will reflect upon the Wigner function. So when we sample from the Wigner function with that probability distribution, 
uh, we'll get all the quantum effects that are associated with those correlations. However, let's say we have just two sample points and we're now evolving the classical dynamics. These may be correlated. And when we sample these two points, we're going to sample them uh, with a probability distribution that reflects those correlations. When they're evolving in time, these are classical trajectories, they don't see each other. These are essentially just single particle expectation value trajectories. And so individual trajectories don't see each other, which means that the discrete truncated Wigner approximation incorporates <coughs> dynamical fluctuations only on the level of the initial state. And therefore, in reality, accounts for them only for short times. At longer times, they won't account quantitatively. So what we've done is that we've improved upon this method using the BBGKY hierarchy. And our results are published. Uh, we put our results out there on this PRB this year. So the idea is that we recast the exact dynamics of the sampled phase points as a BBGKY hierarchy. So we've sampled a bunch of points. So we have a phase point operator, a unique phase point operator that we've characterized by our sample. Each phase point operator shows an exact quantum evolution. We're going to approximate that by adding a BBGKY hierarchy, both of the single point observables, recovering truncated Wigner approximation, and add to that uh, classical dynamics of local correlations to higher order. The BBGKY hierarchy offers us a way, to, offers us a prescription to do this. We just do it to two particle correlation orders. We can go to higher orders as well, but we truncate out connected correlations to third order and beyond. And this yields significantly better approximations for the dynamics of each Wigner sample phase points, especially in strongly correlated systems. And furthermore, because we're using BBGKY, it also makes our method highly conducive to the study of long-range interactions. This has been discussed at some length uh, in, in earlier uh, talks as well. And there's a reference here that has also been cited in several talks about uh, BBGKY. Uh, in the context of the earlier talks, the BBGKY actually offers a prescription for deriving Vlasov dynamics and going beyond that in classical cases, and we're just doing the quantum, uh, we're just doing the quantum version. And here in this diagram, you can see that from the earlier diagrams, in addition to the single point trajectories and their classical evolution, we add to that, coupled to these, the classical evolution of correlations. There are, of course, many, many more, because there are, if there are n single points here, there are n C2 correlations, but I've just showed it, shown it here notionally. So I'm, I'm not going to give you the entire maths for this because it's too complicated. Uh, I'm just going to give you uh, an overview of the ingredients that lead, that allow us to formulate this hierarchy. For each sampled phase point here, shown in this superscript here, we have the exact von Neumann dynamics of the phase point here, shown like this. What we do is first, we define reduced one particle and two particle operators by taking partial traces on both the sides. So if we take partial, so we trace out over all but one particle, we, and do it for each particle, we have n single particle operators that are reduced from here. On the right hand side, because the Hamiltonian may contain two body operators, like hopping and so on, if we take partial trace, we're actually going to get both reduced one body operators and reduced two body operators. So to complete the, so to complete the dynamical system, now we have to take Two, part, two, two particle traces. So here we define them as, we take partial trace over all but the ith and jth site and do it for all combinations of i and j to get reduced two body operators. And then when we take the same partial trace on the right hand side, we're now going to get, because of the Hamiltonian, reduced one body, two body, and three body. So then to complete the dynamics, we take partial trace of uh, reduced three body, a four body, and so on and so forth, all the way to how many atoms there are, n bodies. Uh, of course, if we do it for all of them, we'll get the exact dynamics. But now, this hierarchy offers us a prescription to select the dominant contribution of the correlations, or two-body correlations, which is one of the things that we're interested in looking at. We can do that by rewriting the reduced operators as cluster expansions, shown here for the two-body case and three-body case, and truncating, out the, the, and truncating these out, equating these and all higher-order correlations to zero. This gives us a fairly accurate estimate when plugged into the dynamics for the evolution of two-body correlations. And so, of course, I wrote them all in operators. If we have a general kind of Hamiltonian that involves one-body terms and two-body terms, and all we do now is we write out the uh, reduced operators in the Pauli basis, shown here schematically for the single particle, single 
uh, reduced one body operators and two body operators and compare coefficients on either side of each equation to get a chain of coupled ODEs of coefficients, uh, coefficients of A, which will involve functions of A as well as functions of these C's and higher order terms and so on and so forth. If we truncate the hierarchy at the first level by equating these and all, and all higher order connected correlations to zero, uh, this is basically just the, the classical dynamics, which is the truncated Wigner approximation. If we truncate it lower here by equating the third order and higher order connected correlations to zero, we get the dominant contribution of the correlations that were lost in truncated Wigner. So the only thing that we do is we do truncated Wigner, we sample it, and instead of evolving just the, tr just the classical trajectories, we now evolve this BBGKY hierarchy dynamics truncated to this order. So here are some results. Here we benchmark these against exact methods as well as against old-fashioned trun discrete truncated Wigner. Let's start with the bottom case. This is basically a bunch of XX dipoles. So if cubic interactions here, at t is equal to zero, we are starting from a fully polarized spin state with all the spins in the x direction. Uh, in blue, we have truncated Wigner. In black here, we have exact dynamics. For 100 spins, we've done here DMRG. This is in one dimension. And in red, we have truncated Wigner with BBGKY. Now, you can clearly see that truncated Wigner for single, this is just the expectation value of SX, summed over all sites per site. Uh, we can see that this is, truncated Wigner is better than just bare classical dynamics because uh, you can clearly see from this example that if all the spins are pointing in the x direction, that's the classical ground state. So classically, you won't see any dynamics. Of course, quantum mechanically, you will see dynamics. And although these are essentially classical trajectories, you do see dynamics here. And this comes from the sampling. Because initially, while all the spins are in the x direction, the Wigner function, however, has a uniform distribution of y and z spins that average out to zero in the classical case. So when we sample from it, we sample uniformly a bunch of y and z z spins between minus one and one. So the y and z, z spins are not zero. So each sample point is not in the classical ground state. And so they evolve. And it is their average effect that produces this dynamics. It's pretty close to the exact dynamics. If we add the BBGKY correction that I had described previously, we get excellent agreement up to experimentally accessible time scales. Here, this one, this is in units of h bar over j here. Well, j here. And here, uh, we're looking at correlations. This is basically spin squeezing. This is an entanglement witness. That's basically the, at each time, the minimum variance of the spin operator in a direction perpendicular to the spin vector. We can see again, qualitatively, uh, quantitatively, we get far better agreement for correlations here. Uh, sorry, OK. So again, uh, we've also shown this for the Ising model. We can see excellent agreement both for mean field uh, all-to-all interactions as well as dipolar interactions. And here we have uh, the triangular lattice from John Bollinger's group that I had shown previously. We've got it a transverse field to it. As a proof of concept, we've done spin squeezing in two dimensions. We're waiting for experimental uh, data to benchmark this against. And finally, as an outlook, uh, we just uh, were interested in seeing that uh, whether we can extend this to longer times to do theoretical investigations, whether this reflects whether we can get universality in non-equilibrium systems like the kibble zurek mechanism, as well as a lot of other things like quantum ergodicity, Lieb-Robinson bounds, and so on. A lot of this has been discussed in earlier talks. Uh, and of course, we're also looking at this for dissipative open quantum systems in the Markov limit. Uh, this is a collaboration that uh, is ongoing with uh, Romain Robin as well as Tiago. And uh, finally, well, let's skip this. And finally, also modeling experimental decoherence. These are Raman scattered and Rayleigh scattered processes that uh, bring decoherence in the Bollinger experiment and other spin systems. And we can add these as uh, uh, non Hermitian Lindblad corrections. And we're trying to extend our BBGKY prescription and our truncated Wigner prescription to model these systems. Thanks. <laughs>